It is no secret that the military is the first to gain access to all new technologies. Radiation was no exception. The Soviet army tried to use radioactive materials with little or no information about how dangerous they were. Through endless experiments with radiation, both military and civilians were exposed to radiation, lost health, and died. Today, dangerous artifacts from that time are found time and again in various parts of the country. Like time bombs, they continue to stealthily kill everyone who happens to be in the vicinity. After the US dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Soviet chemical defense forces were charged with protecting against the effects of nuclear weapons. The military mastered new technologies in an emergency mode due to expectations of an imminent atomic attack by the US. The military science of radiation handling was a new field and had no thoroughly tested methods. Therefore, while the USSR military was mastering basics of it, there were many incidents, dangerous for them and for the civilians. Knowledge at the price of life Since the mission of national defense was paramount in the USSR, the military was not subject to criminal Article 247, violation of the rules for handling environmentally hazardous substances and waste. In fact, who among prosecutors would have had the courage to prosecute Marshal Georgi Zhukov, who commanded the Totsk exercise in 1954 in the Orenburg region? In the course of the exercise, the possibility of a breach of enemy defense using atomic weapons was practiced. More than 40,000 military personnel and almost 10,000 local residents were exposed to radioactive radiation. All of them were simply unaware that they were receiving doses of radiation that dramatically increased the risk of cancer and chromosomal mutations, as well as malformations and infant mortality among civilians. Both military and civilian populations were similarly exposed near the Semipalatinsk test site, where Soviet nuclear weapons were tested from 1949 to 1989. There is evidence of experiments being conducted there on human prisoners sentenced to death. They were placed in closed boxes with windows close to the epicenter of nuclear explosions to determine the power of the striking blow. In the late 40s and early 50s the chemical defense units and some military institutes conducted research related to the study of the use of atomic and radioactive weapons. In addition to nuclear bombs, the so-called dirty products, shells, rockets, bombs and torpedoes filled with radioactive substances, were studied. Under conditions of strict secrecy, they studied possibilities of combat operations under radioactive contamination of terrain, methods of decontamination of territory and military equipment, special treatment of personnel. For this purpose, a combat situation was simulated at a proving ground near Moscow. Women from civilian personnel, practically without protection, she was in last place, carried radioactive solutions in simple buckets, which were used to irrigate experimental tanks, armored personnel carriers, cannons, and airplanes. Then the same women used rags and mops to wash the equipment with decontaminating solutions, contaminating themselves, their clothes and large parts of the area with hazardous substances. Naturally, the mortality rate among participants in such tests was several times higher than the statistical average. However, in addition to the combat application of radiation, the Soviet military was also interested in the applied direction. The latest inventions of scientists in this field were actively introduced in the troops in order to increase the efficiency of control of combat systems and to gain an advantage over the enemy in combat. Back in the 30s of the 20th century, Swiss entrepreneurs began to apply a glow-in-the-dark compound to the hands and dials of watches, it was both convenient and beautiful. The Soviet military also found a use for it and began to apply it to military instruments, thanks to which they constantly glowed in the dark. However, there was a small nuance, the permanent light composition, LDS, was made on the basis of the radioactive element radium-226. At the time of the boom and the use of LDS, no one knew that this substance was not good for the human body. The fact is that radium-226 emits gamma rays as well as beta and alpha particles. Getting inside a living body, these hot particles can cause anemia, anemia, leukemia, bleeding, damage to blood vessels and respiratory organs. The worst result is radiation sickness and lethal outcome in 3 to 8 years after the injury. However, having no information about the harm caused by SPD, the military of both the USSR and NATO countries began to apply the compound on a massive scale to literally everything from pressure gauges and tachometers to the tips of helicopter blades. 
In general, as long as an SPD instrument is intact and airtight, it poses virtually no danger. But if the casing or paint coating is damaged, the volatile alpha particles penetrate the body when inhaled and can lead to serious illness. Fortunately, by the early 1960s, the harmful effects of SPD were finally noticed, but it was too late. SPD devices had managed to spread to storerooms, garages, museums, private apartments, and landfills. Such dangerous finds can still be found to this day, and sometimes they are quite unexpected. For example, in the Nazis dosimetrists at Radon came across Christmas decorations painted with deadly SPD. And in the Museum of the Revolution on Tverskaya Street, after 1998, the Museum of Contemporary Russian History, they found a portrait of Stalin that had been painted with SPD. It hung for several years in the reception room at the desk of the secretary of the Generalissimo Poskrbyshev. The portrait glowed in the dark at 200,000 microrenkin per hour MCR /h, while the natural and safe background in central Russia is 10 to 20 MCR /h. Interestingly, the extremely dangerous composition was often used by artists, thus, unknowingly, putting their own lives in danger. In March 2000, radiation emergency workers from Radon seized a beautiful box from an apartment on Tikvinskia Street in Moscow. Everything in it was beautiful, the towers of the Kremlin, the stars with their rays of holiday salute, and a dedicatory inscription. A box that emitted 6,700 microrenkin per hour. Except it was all painted using SPD with radium salts, the box glowed at 6,700 microrenkin per hour. Its owner, a former combat commander, received the dangerous gift back in 1948, it was kept in his apartment for over half a century. By some miracle, in spite of this proximity, the man remained in good health until his old age. Probably the fact that the lacquer coating of the box was flawless or its case was of great reliability saved him. Trained and irradiated. In the second half of the 90s, experts Radon faced a problem that came, as they say, from where they were not expected. Many officers, retired, arranged military teachers in schools. They brought various objects from the military with them into the civil defense offices. Among other things, there were obsolete and discarded military dosimetric instruments such as DP-63A and DP-5. At one time these artifacts were meant for measuring the consequences of an atomic explosion. Though the time sent the devices to a well-deserved rest, they contained a dangerous cocktail of beta preparations, a reference source of low power and a microampere scale covered with an SPD with radium salts. Until now, if the device stored on a shelf or discarded in a landfill fell into someone's inquisitive hands and was disassembled, radioactive contamination could not be avoided. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.